and deep down, we might believe that we are right. You have moments where you get to the dinner table and there's a little bit of a disagreement and you're like, oh, well, I'm right. And I don't want to talk to you today about right and wrong. I just want to propose a few questions. Since when did being right take priority over being in relation? Since when did being correct become more important than being close? This is the world that we live in. I want to address something. The enemy's plan is to divide us from families because he understands this. Unity under God in the form of a family is a powerful posture. Unity. Come on, you can give it up for that. Unity under God in the form of a family is a powerful posture. The enemy understands that. That when a father builds with a son, they are invincible. That when a daughter and a mother comes together to create something, something beautiful happens. That when two or more gather in God's name, there is hope, there is healing, there is forgiveness. The enemy understands this. So his goal is to divide us from the people who raised us, the people we love. And I want to address a few things, the ways that he will use. Firstly, the enemy will use cultural boundaries. He would let the world we live in create division and lines in between us because of what culture is doing that was once different from the culture that our parents grew up in. He will start to pin tradition against trends. That the traditions of our fathers and our mothers and our aunties and our uncles, the things that they did in tradition, will be pinned against what's trending now. And through that, he creates these things called generational gaps. And lastly, he will bring up pain and bitterness. The exchange of words that happened when we were younger or when, we, when parents were just starting the parenthood journey, those moments that happened that maybe we wish that didn't happen, the enemy will bring those back up. And we'll find ourselves in, in a fit, in a rush to leave. But I, I want to tell you guys something. That there's something beautiful about the family dynamic. That God designed it so it could be the safe place for us. So that when college students come back home, that they have a safe place where they can be real, vulnerable, and open. That, and there's high school students right now who are itching to get out of their parents' house. They just can't wait till they get to college. And then you get out of college and there's these things called bills. There's things called jury duty. You like try to go on a trip by yourself without your parents and you realize they've been paying $30 every time y'all went to the city just to park a car. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Regardless of where your home is, there's no place. Some of us, are, our family dynamics aren't traditional. Some of us, we, we disagree with the people that we love in, in all spectrums. But I want you to know that it's not about agreeing on the same thing, but it's about loving each other even when you don't agree. <laughs> Therefore, our families must be built on a firm foundation so that we may not be ripped apart or divided by the storms of this world. In Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27, it says this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had a foundation on a rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. That is the vision that the enemy has for us, to crash and divide families. So we have to build our families in a strong foundation. We will build our house by bricks, but not bricks of mud and cement. But there's this thing in the Bible that's called the fruit of the spirits, and those are the bricks that we're supposed to use. These attributes aren't just behavioral functions of a Christ follower, but rather tools that God has gifted us with so we may not weather and become divided. I want to share these with you. The bricks that we're supposed to use, it says in Galatians 5.22, they're the fruits of the Spirit. It's love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is what our 
houses must be built by. So that when we get older and we move out of our families and we reminisce on the conversations that we have with our aunties, uncles, our moms, our dads, we hold them in high praise. Not because we agreed on everything, but because our house was so strong, it was built on God's word that we could disagree and still sleep under the same roof. That no matter what trend comes, it won't tear us apart. No matter what, what, what we think about politics, none of those things are more important than the people that God has surrounded us with. I want to leave you with this one thought. Families that build their house on the rock are families that are built to remain close. God's promise for, for us is to remain close even after we move out. It's to remain close so that when we bring our grandchildren home, that they'll understand why we live the way we live. That is God's plan for you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning into our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you can stay connected with everything going on here at City First Church. To watch the full sermon this video was taken from, click here. And to watch more inspirational clips like the one you just saw, click here. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.